Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First. It's the Friday after Thanksgiving edition. Gobble, gobble. How many of you guys had enough turkey yesterday? I think I got everything I needed and more. Um, I'm way up on the scales, um, enjoying some healthy lifestyle living. Now, I understand that there are quite a few people who get up early on Black Friday uh, to go and shop. And I just want you to know, I think I think you've lost your mind. <laughs> I'm just kind of joking. What in the world? Getting up at like 2 and 3 in the morning and going out there in the freezing cold and looking for the deals. I have a friend in um, Georgia that he's out there filming his wife um, looking for the deals, man. <clears throat> There's this thing called the internet now where you can do it online. I'm just saying. Um, I support your local businesses, all that, I understand. But come on, most of us at Target, that ain't our local business, right? So that's what's up. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Pray First. Hi, Donna. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Renee. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Leah. Hi, Neil. How many of you went Black Friday shopping? Come on, give me a give me a little heads up on that. Hashtag I did or yeah, I did. Hashtag I'm I'm here. Uh I'm out here with the crazies. Uh how many of you uh had a good Thanksgiving? Hashtag let me know. Uh good, great. Um, enjoyed your Thanksgiving. We enjoyed our Thanksgiving. It was the first Thanksgiving we stayed home in 18 years, and uh, we just had a little family Thanksgiving, and it was so nice. And then we went to the zoo and saw zoo lights, and it was snowing outside in the um, in the foyer area, I guess you'd call it, of the zoo. Uh, then we went to, what else did we do? We rode a train, rode a carousel. We uh, had some fun, went by Starbucks, but they were closed. What else we do? We went to Graceland. That's the home of Elvis Presley. Had some good times out there, just goofing around his family. Anyway, we're talking about hearing God. And I know a lot of you are off work and everyone's out of school. And so this is probably going to be a big time recorded version. Hashtag live if you're joining me at the seven o'clock hour. Hashtag recorded if you're joining me at any other time. Hashtag shared and share this out on your wall because we're in a very interesting topic about hearing God. Can we hear the voice of God? Um, so we've already talked about it a little bit. I'm going to go straight to John chapter 10, 27 and 28 and read that verse. And then we're going to get on with today's, um, today's conversation. My sheep hear my voice. This is Jesus speaking. My sheep, I'm the good shepherd, he says in earlier verses. He says, my sheep hear my voice, not just feel my impressions, Guys, you can feel impressed by God to do something or not do something. But there is clarity in the voice of God that you can hear. You can understand his voice. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now listen what this is attached to. Hearing the voice of God is attached to, attached to eternal life. Verse 28, and I give them who? Who does he give? I give my sheep eternal life and they shall never perish. That just gave me chills all down my back. I give my sheep eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone be able to snatch them out of my hand. Guys, that is so awesome. So we've talked about hearing God, and here are some promises that I've made. Number one, during this series, as long as it takes, you are going to learn to hear God. Somebody hit some hearts, hit some likes, and tell our new people that are popping in that we're so glad that they're here. Uh, guys, you're about to see a bouquet. Uh, you're about to see a fireworks of hearts and likes and thumbs up. And what that is, is our Pray First family is grabbing their phones, grabbing their notebooks, running over to their computers, and they're letting you know that we're glad that you're here. And what we've been talking about is hearing God. And we're guaranteeing that if you have never heard God, that you will hear God. It's not something that you have to conjure up or think up, or it's not something that you do. Uh, it's something that you are. It's someone that you are. You are a sheep, and he says, sheep, hear his voice. He knows them, and, he, and we follow him. So number one, we talked about hearing God is innate. It's inside of us. It's natural. It's reborn into us when our spirit comes alive, uh, when we trust in Christ. Today, we're going to talk about it's learned. So yeah, it's natural. And you may think that it's learned is contradictory to 
uh, it comes natural, but that's not true. Let me give you an example. Babies are born with the ability to communicate, right? They communicate. Oh boy, do babies communicate. How many of you are parents? Hashtag yep, yep. They can communicate. Generally, they like to communicate at night. And they like to communicate when their diaper is messy. And they like to communicate when they're hungry. And they like to communicate when you snuggle. And they like to communicate. Children are born with the ability to communicate, but you have to teach them to talk. You have to teach them words. You have to teach them syllables. You have to teach them sounds, grammar, language. You have to teach a child when to speak. You have to teach a child what to say, what not to say, and when not to say anything. Amen? Let me say that again. What to say, what not to say, and when not to say anything. There's an order to language and communication. Um, so children are born, again, with the ability to communicate, but we have to teach them to talk. We have to teach them to listen. We have to teach them what words mean by our actions and by our guiding and gentle uh, nudging and sometimes discipline and correction. Now, if you hear about a class on prayer, now we're talking about hearing God, and I, I've guaranteed you that you're going to hear God. Um, if you can't hear God, you're going to be saved in this series. You're going to give your life to Christ in this series. If you can hear God, you're going to hear him more clearly uh, because we're talking about this, because you can consider this a class on hearing God if you want to. And here's what's unique about that. A lot of people um, have no problem with, I'm going to go to a class on prayer. I'm going to learn how to pray. I'm going to go to a class and someone's going to teach me how to pray. But it's a little weird when someone says, uh, you're going to hear God. I'm going to teach you how to hear God. And you think, whoa, wait a minute. I can't hear God. Whoa, how's he going to teach me to hear God? How can he guarantee me? I've heard this question. How can he guarantee me or guarantee anyone that they're going to hear God? Well, why is it when you hear there's going to be a class on prayer? I mean, nothing. I said, yeah, okay, that's legit. Well, let me remind you something about prayer. Uh, prayer is not just you speaking. Prayer includes you listening. Let me, let me say that again. Prayer is not just you speaking. Prayer should include you listening. A lot of people's prayer life simply consists of giving God a to-do list. God never intended prayer to be simply a sheep's to-do list for the shepherd. Prayer should be speaking and listening. I'm going to ask you a question, pretty blunt question. If you can't hear God, why do you even pray? Just think about that for a minute. I want you just to think about that concept, that principle. If you can't hear God, why do you pray? Now, we just covered one of them. To make your request known to God. Absolutely. But again, prayer was never intended to be a to-do list from God's sheep to his shepherd. Prayer is communication between a father and his sons and daughters. Prayer is a communication between a father and his children. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, Jesus said, look, I want you to communicate to him, and I want you to talk to him, and I want you to call him our Father, who art in heaven. Holy is your name. Prayer is communication. When you pray, I want to encourage you. Listen, you're not praying this is going to blow you away because some of you have never prayed before. You're not praying unless you're listening. Let me, let me introduce that concept to you again. You're not praying unless you're listening. Okay, come on, come on. I know you want to hear from God, but you're not listening. Where, where in your prayer... Are you taking time to be still and listen? I'm going to give you some very ordinary principles of how to hear God. And if you practice them, I guarantee you'll hear God. There's just no question. You will hear from the God who said, let there be light. You will hear wisdom about your specific situation. 
This morning when I woke up, in the past couple of days, it's getting more and more so, I generally wake up singing a worship song. This morning when I woke up, the phrase was going through my mind constantly. In him, there is no darkness at all, only light. In him, there is no darkness at all, only light. God was saying over and over and over and over and over again. I mean, he was speaking to me. When I woke up, my spirit was talking to God, and he kept repeating in him, there is no darkness at all, Whew. only light. There's no fear. There's no confusion. There is, there is peace there's courage, there's clarity in him. There is no darkness at all, only light. Guys, walking in the light does not mean there's not obstacles. It means that you can see a way around the obstacles. Walking in the light does not mean there's not tribulation and there's not loud noises that initially frighten you. But in the light, you can identify what those noises are and realize that God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. In the light, it doesn't mean that there won't be mourning and pain and suffering and tribulation. But in the light, you can see daddy. You can see that there's a bigger picture, that there's a sovereign God, that there's someone in control of the chaos in your life. Amen? So I want you to understand that God was speaking to me when I woke up. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to know anything. I just make myself available every morning to listen. When I say pray first, what, what enters your mind? I bet for a lot of us, and, and this is understandable, that we are waking up and, and, and immediately talking. Sometimes we need to train ourselves to wake up and be still and know that he's God. I cannot stop saying this. He has, it, it just keeps going through my mind. It almost is driving me crazy. <laughs> In him, there is no darkness at all. So I had to look that up and see, you know, where's that in the, in the Bible? It's in 1 John. I didn't even realize, I mean, he spoke to me a phrase that's right there in scripture. In him, there is no darkness at all. And then he added this, this tagline to it only light. Whew, that's good news for some of us. Anyways, Jesus is asked by his disciples, teach us to pray. We want to learn to hear God. Include in your pray first. Include in your prayer time where you're not talking. Can you imagine someone calling you on the phone, giving you 10 minutes worth of to-do list, and then saying amen and hanging the phone up and never listening to your response? Can you imagine running to an old friend at, 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 at the grocery or at the department store or online and you just talk for like 15 minutes and you never, you say, hey, how you doing? What's going on in your life? I'm doing just fine. Thank you so much. I just, you just kind of have a conversation with yourself. Prayer is not prayer if you're not including something and that's listening. God told me something years ago. He said, if Doug... Sometimes you need to shut your mouth. <laughs> he said it very plainly to me, Doug. Sometimes you need to shut your mouth because you can't learn anything when you're the only one talking because all you know to say is what you know. Sometimes, Doug, you just need to be quiet and listen. Listen to what other people are saying. Listen to what other situations and circumstances Take time to listen. We are missing one of the biggest portions. You know, you know why we don't have clarity? We don't listen. You know why we don't have direction? We don't listen. You know why we don't have provision? We don't listen. You know why we don't have comfort? We don't listen. You know why we don't have peace? We don't listen. You know why we don't have health? We don't listen. You know why we wonder why we don't have peace, health, clarity? You know why we wonder why we can't hear from God? Because we're constantly talking and we're wondering why we can't hear from God. You're hearing you. Somewhere in the scenario of prayer, you've got to be quiet and listen, not go to sleep. 
not chase a butterfly, not grab your phone, not look at social media, not check another television channel, not look at the game, not talk to your spouse, not talk to your kids. Take time to listen. God's got something to say to you. So let me just give you this real quick, and I want to pray for you. Hearing God is not based on something that you need to do harder and strain and struggle. Hearing God is someone that you are. You're a sheep, and sheep hear his voice. Hearing God is not based on knowledge or wisdom. You don't have to learn about the intricacies of the cosmos to learn how to pray. Here's how you learn how to pray. Number one, write this down. Write it down. Number one, get alone with God. I'm going to take you back 30 years. Get alone with God. Number one, hashtag number one, get alone with God. That does not include your Bible, your phone, your anything that's going to distract you. Initially, I just want you to get alone with God. Initially, the first step is to get alone with God. Don't have your phone. Don't, don't be on Facebook. Don't be watching TV. You know, a, a great place to get alone with God is in the car when you're driving. But don't have your radio on. Number one, get alone with God. Number two, the next step. The next step you want to take is you want to speak to God and listen. But let me give you number two to write down. Number two, start reading the Word. Oh, Pastor, you just told me not to get my Bible. I want you to start reading the Word more consistently. You have got to start reading the Word. I know it's 2018, and we can Google everything, and we can watch, and we can listen to podcasts, but no, 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 no. I don't want you to hear what someone else is hearing God say all the time. I want you to hear what God is saying to you. Number two is get your Bible, read the Word, and then watch this. Watch this. Then ask God, what are you saying to me in this passage? Number one, get alone with God. Number two, read his word and ask God, what are you saying to me in this passage? Number one, get alone with God. Number two, read his word. Ask God, what are you saying to me in this passage? Number three, write it down. Write it down. You will be amazed that as you begin to write down what God's word is saying to you, that he'll start speaking more. What does all this have to do with hearing God? It's taking the time to listen. We don't just give God our first fruits. We don't just give God a tithe of our finances. As followers of Christ, we give God the first of our day the first of our time, the first of our week, the first of our month, the first of our year. Number one, get along with God. Number two, read the word. <laughs> read the word and then listen. Ask God, what are you saying to me specifically? And number three, write it down. You need a prayer journal. You need a notebook. You need something. I prefer... And I suggest it be a pen and paper. If it's online, if it's on your phone, notifications, emails, messengers, all those things will distract you. You'll go looking at Target and you'll say, oh, I was praying. I want to encourage you to do it with a pen and paper. I'm going to give you this one more time and then we'll tell you what we're going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about how hearing God matures. So if you do what I'm telling you, I'm telling you to do this today. Start this process. Get along with God, number one. Number two, read his word. Ask God, what are you saying to me in this passage? And number three, write it down. Lord Jesus, right now, there's a lot of people out there who need a lot of things. And if I can help connect them to your voice, if I can help connect them to your voice, it will help them more than any, any book, any counseling session, any, it'll help them. It will tremendously help them. Father, to those out there listening right now, to those who have ears, let them hear what your spirit is saying to them. They need to hear things that have never been spoken. They need to read things that have never been written. 
They need to hear and feel and see and sense things that eyes have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered the heart of man what you've prepared for those who you love. God, I pray today that as they struggle with sickness in their family, debt in their family, chaos, confusion, um, sin, uh, mourning, Father, all these things that people are dealing with and they're, they're screaming out and they're crying out for help and they're looking for direction and they're looking for healing and they're looking for clarity and they're looking for wisdom. Whew. May they run to your name. Father, there are people running to the wrong, strong towers with their troubles. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous, you and I, run to it and are safe. And all God's people said, amen. Hashtag some yup yups. Hashtag some live if you're joining me live. Hashtag recorded if you're joining me recorded. Hashtag shared if you shared it out. And if you would, please share it out. Let's hit some more hearts and hit some likes and tell everybody that we're so glad that they hung in here and stayed in here on this Friday after Thanksgiving where most of us had to roll crooked out of bed because our belly is out of you know alignment with the rest of our bodies. If you're out there on Black Friday, be safe, be careful, don't be crazy. I want y'all to know that, you know, there's online deals, man. Hey, Tammy, hey, Chip, hey, Heath, hey, Barbie, hey, guys, hey, Bonnie, Annette, Marilyn, Kristen, Susan, Mike, Tracy, Charles, hey, guys, Leah, so good to see you, Don Leah, so good to see you, uh, Michelle, Donna, Marilyn, Tracy, gosh, there's so many of you. I want to encourage you, number one, Man, golly, guys, get along with God. Number two, start reading the word and ask him, what did you say to me in this word? And number three, write it down. I got to go. I love y'all. Big weekend, three-day weekend for, most, for many of us. Happy day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. Peace out. By the way, I'm in Paxton's room, so I can't be held responsible for anything that may be trashed in here.